guys, Dr. Christy Ennis. If you have back, pelvis, or hip pain or tightness and or tightness, then you need these exercises in your life to help you relieve that tension, relieve that pain. And make sure you stay right through to the end so that you make sure that you get all the stuff that actually goes into causing this pain. The first thing to keep in mind is breathing, and that's gonna be important for all of these exercises. So we really wanna focus on diaphragm breathing, which is if you put your hands on your belly, when you breathe in, you wanna think about filling that belly up, and then when you breathe out, let that belly go. So this is super important because it helps calm down the nervous system, which goes into pain, right, and tension. And also it gets those pelvic floor muscles to act how they're supposed to. Diaphragm and pelvic floor sit right next to each other. So breathing is super important for this whole area. So again, breathe in, fill the belly up, breathe out, let that belly go, trying to not too much to fill up in through that rib cage. This next exercise builds upon that breathing. So you're actually gonna lie down. You can do it on the floor or in your bed. Get cozy and comfy, that's important for this one. So remember that diaphragm breathing, and then there's a leg motion that goes with it. So as I breathe in, fill that belly up, my legs and my feet are going to roll out. And as I breathe out, my legs and my feet, that's important, are going to roll in. So if I were to hook you up to a machine, if you did this exercise, we'd see those pelvic floor muscles gradually start to actually relax, which is exactly what we're looking for. So those hip muscles will start to open a little bit too, but this is one of the best ones if you're gonna choose any exercise to actually get those things to relax a little bit. Now, if this is uncomfortable for you in any way, shape, or form, you can still do this lying down, but you could always do this with your knees bent up. And you can also do this one seated as well. Next one is on those hands and knees. Again, you can still do this one in bed if it's more comfortable for you. We're gonna go into that more traditional yoga pose with this one. So it's an inhale, squeeze those shoulder blades together, arch that spine, lift that head, and then round and tuck. So here we're really involving the spine as well as through those deep abdominal and pelvic floor areas because those pelvic floor muscles do attach to the spine. So we need to make sure that that's an important piece. We need to make sure it is an important piece. So we need to make sure that it is part of our program. And you're only going in a range of motion that feels good for your body. And that's gonna be different for everybody. So shoot for about five to 10 of these depending on how it feels for you. If you wanna add a little bit more to this, if you curl those toes under and do that same motion with that cat-cow, you're stretching out those feet a little bit and the same nerves that work on the feet also work on the pelvic floor. So actually by relaxing your feet, you can help relax the pelvic floor. For this next one, if you have some pillows or even a yoga block or two, you might want those just to help support your hips if you do have some hip pain. But this is probably my second favorite one in this whole series. So if you bring the soles of your feet together and then all you're doing is nothing, <laughs> you're letting gravity actually help open up those knees. So again, if you're like, oh, that doesn't feel good, you're gonna take a block or a pillow and just help support those hips or if it's just one hip so that you're not struggling to hold them up there. So this one obviously opens up those inner thighs, really gets those pelvic floor muscles to open. And I use this one every day and really focus in on my diaphragmatic breathing. The other thing that I tend to do that helps me is I use the word soften, and that really helps me to just let everything go, including those pelvic floor muscles. And sometimes you don't even know they've been tense until you actually really relax them and you go, oh my gosh, I've been walking around with those things tight all day, and it feels really good. So three to five breaths here. Okay, feet nice and wide for this one, and this is a counter pose to the other one. So this time we're gonna drop our knees right in towards one another. And both of these work on those deep hip rotators, which again, attach where some of those pelvic floor muscles are. So diaphragmatic breathing, soften, three to five breaths. Last one is a classic. And so you are going to cross one ankle over that thigh, and then you're gonna bring that opposite thigh up towards you. So here we're stretching the piriformis, which attaches to the sacrum. Some of those pelvic floor muscles attach to that sacrum too, so they definitely both can be affected. You're gonna hang out here. You can add a little rock side to side if it feels good. If this is too difficult to get into, you can bring that foot back down, 
Try to keep that leg crossed if you can, and then bring that knee across. And then there's one more option too. If you're like, no, thank you, I don't wanna cross, that's okay too. Go ahead and bring that knee up, and then just try to bring that over until you feel a stretch right in through those glutes in about three to five breaths. I truly want to be able to help as many people as I possibly can. But the, with the number of questions that I get every day, it's definitely difficult to answer in a timely manner, if at all. And that's why I created my membership, so that I can offer personalized guidance and support when you need it. So check out my membership options.